Real quick, the video that you're about to watch was recorded already, and I forgot to mention that I actually created my own creativity challenge, or I guess my, my own creative confidence challenge, in order to make this video. And I think that's really important because I talk a lot about the, the lessons that I, I've learned from, you know, just from in general what I was going to say beforehand, but also um, I forgot to mention that yesterday, I was, so yesterday I was making these videos, and I was making the creative confidence video and I realized that I was going to be blocking off a period of time where I was going to be having my own creative confidence challenge. And so I thought there's, there's no reason why I should be making this video at this moment. I need, to, I need to take the ideas that I would say, apply them as much as I can inside my own creative challenge, and then I need to come out on the other side and actually give you the lesson. So I did do that and I did give you the lesson, but in the video I forgot to actually mention that I, I had this challenge. So I'm going to talk about the challenge at the very end of this video, and um, I know it's already a long video, but uh, I think it's worth it to know that this isn't something that I'm saying, it's something that I'm also doing. I think it's very important for, for you to know that this, is, this information is not just coming from, you know, it, it's easy for me to tell you to be confident in something or some place that I already have confidence, right? So instead of that, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I take this question about confidence and I find my own, uh, my own analogous situation where I would have to draw on confidence, I would have to do something new where I don't have all of this experience backing me up. So that's what I did, and you're going to get the lessons from that, that experience. And then on the very end, I'll tell you a little bit about that experience. Hello everybody, Jared Volley here for CreativeStandup.com. In this video, we're going to talk about creative confidence. So I had an email question about what to do if, you, uh, if you're lacking confidence in your jokes. And uh, this specific email, it, um, it seems like uh, the person that sent it was writing, has been writing comedy for about a year or so. And it seems like from the way it was phrased that he has not yet been on the stage. So that's kind of the assumptions that I'm, I'm working with here. Um, so the first point I want to make is that we, we never require or invoke the idea that we need to be confident unless I feel like there's two variables that are important as to whether we should say I need to be confident or we don't even care about confidence. The first one is that we see as a part of our ego inside of the, the creative product that we make. So let's say like uh, by that I mean that uh, if I make something and it fails, then that will somehow, it somehow means something about who I am or uh, what my potential might be, right? So that if my idea fails, some part of the actual me kind of feels like it dies or is, is been injured, right? So there's some kind of personalization that occurs between like the, the people's reaction to the creative product and then my, my reaction to their reaction. So there's some kind of personalization. And the second one is, is risk. Do you see, which is actually kind of combined, uh, do you see that there's some kind of risk or like a high risk situation where you feel like the, the best you needs to show up, right? So those are the two, the, the two big situations. And there might be more, but this is just kind of what I was feeling as I was going. Um, so anyway, so I, I created a, this diagram to kind of show you what it might, this might look like. So on one side we have like uh, we have on the top left we have or the left side we have no ego so so the creative product that I make has nothing to do with who I really am right like my creative product could burn to the ground and I would still be okay because I am bigger than that that idea or that thing right and then on the right side we have the ego where it's personalized where I need my idea to work because if it doesn't work then I'm a failure, or if it doesn't work, then I'm going to be poor forever, or whatever the, the personalization is. So on the top, we have high-risk situations. So we, we see it as, as there being some kind of very high chance that, um, that there is going to be a problem, and then low-risk situations on the bottom. So what I want to say here is that the only time we really feel like we require confidence is when we're in that top right corner, when our ego is involved and we see the, the outcome as being very important to who we are as a person, right? It might influence my future. So like if I fail, that means my future is going to be bad. 
Uh, it might reinforce like a negative belief I have about myself so that maybe if I fail here, then I say, you know what, I failed on those other things and that means, and then, I'll then that itself is a huge consequence, right? So let's start off in the top left corner. Let's say, let's, let's give this situation. Imagine that, uh, that we're just gonna roll a, dice, uh, roll a die, right? So uh, if you roll a six, you win. And if you roll a one, two, three, four, five, then uh, you lose. And if you lose, let's say you have to go and do something embarrassing, right? So you know, your ego is gonna be involved, but it'll be involved later on, right? So in that situation, you get to roll the dice one time and you have to get a six, right? Even though it's important for you to get that six, no part of you feels guilty about rolling a five, right? You wouldn't have to take that with you, right? In your head, you wouldn't be like, oh, my parents always said I'd never roll sixes, right? You wouldn't personalize any of that because we know 100% that we are not uh, the product of a dice roll, right? So no part of our ego is involved until like maybe later on in the future if you lose and you have to go do that thing maybe your ego's there right but it certainly isn't inside the dice roll right and actually we don't even need to be ego involved when we do the embarrassing thing we could just do the embarrassing thing and say this is a consequence of the dice roll it means nothing about who i am right so your ego doesn't even have to be involved even in this situation this hypothetical so let's move down one like we have uh, let's, let's lower the risk, right? So instead of one dice roll, one die roll, <laughs> instead of one, I'm just going to cut out the, the noun now, instead of doing one roll of the object, then you'd have, let's say, I say, you know what, you have to roll a six. And, you know, same thing, something embarrassing happens if you don't roll a six. But you get to roll as many times as you want, right? Now you're like, well, there's zero need for confidence now, right? We understand mathematics enough to where you can just be like, okay, that's a three, okay? Two, 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 two. Wow, that's really bad, okay, six, there it is, right? We understand that it, the consequences, like if, we're, if we get to keep rolling, then it doesn't matter anymore, right? We don't need to invoke the idea of confidence. We don't need to care about any individual roll because we get to roll again. Uh, on the bottom right, we have, uh, so let's, let's, let's move away from dice. And let's say, uh, now let's just go and say we're, we're being funny now. In a low risk situation, let's say that that is being, uh, being funny around your friends, right? So the people that get into stand-up comedy or get into any type of comedy, they usually do it because around their friends, they are naturally funny and they want to convert that love of using humor onto the stage, right? So they're naturally funny in everyday life. Why is that the case, right? Why are you so confident uh, in your jokes when you're with your friends, right? Because you can bomb a joke with your friends. That is absolutely possible. You have, I guess, your, your chances of each joke go up, uh, of it, them working go up because you kind of know your friends and your friends know you, right? But that is not the whole story. You can't say that, that the only reason I feel uh, vulnerable is because there's a, a, a smaller or a bigger uh, probability of like success, right? I feel I'm 100% I'm confident because there's a, a good chance of success with my friends, but I'm very unconfident in my jokes because, you know, I don't know what the percentage is. So there is a part of you that, that, that I guess is uh, wrapped up in that percentage, but that is definitely not the whole story. What I would say is that the reason why you don't invoke the need for confidence with your friends is because you don't interpret failed jokes as failed, right? You don't interpret your punchlines as being the, the final say as to whether or not you're funny, right? You have a history with your, with your friends and, and hopefully after your joke, you know, you, you'll have a future with your friends as well, right? But when you say a joke that is not quite as funny as you thought it would be with your friends, you never see that as being finalized. You would just be like, yeah, like your jokes are good too. Like remember when you said, and you would just like, you would riff off that and you would start talking about other things and you would use that as a new beginning for something else, right? You wouldn't just like hit the joke and then you'd stop and it didn't work. So you're just going to go, hmm, that was unfortunate that that didn't work. 
right? You would react to that in the moment and you would be real and you would build something new, right? So it's the end of that joke, but then it's the beginning of something else, right? So I believe that that is where a lot of the confidence in humor comes from, right? Like, I mean, your friends can be in a bad mood. You'd still be confident in your humor, even though the probability that the joke would, would work would, would go down, right? You'd have to get them out of the bad mood first, and that would be much harder, right? So the probability is not where your confidence is. Uh, let's move up a little bit. We have uh, on the top right corner, we have your ego being involved in some way. And then we also have uh, like a high, like a higher risk situation. So this is what uh, you're thinking about when you're saying, I'm not confident in my jokes. I'm not confident enough to take them onto the stage, right? And the reason I would say that that, that is the problem is because you're, you're focused on this one, uh, this one show, right? And let me, I'm going to back up and I'm going to give you a really interesting analogy. And I cannot remember for the life of me where the analogy came from. Uh, if you do know where it came from, please let me know because I, I would like to give credit to it. Um, but okay, so imagine that you get to take a vacation, right? It gets to be your perfect vacation, uh, whatever the perfect vacation is for you, right? And you spend however much money. How much money would you spend for the perfect vacation for one week of whatever the perfect vacation is, right? So that number is pretty, pretty high, right? So take that number and then now let's change the situation. Let's say how much money would you spend for the exact same vacation but when you finish the vacation, all your memories will be completely wiped, right? So you cannot take the experience with you, right? You will not remember that you did the thing that you did. You won't remember how amazing and wonderful it was. You, you just, it'll just be gone. How much money is that vacation worth now? For me, when I, when I think about that, I would say, I think the vacation is worth something, maybe, but there's zero way I would be the same. Like I would not pay the same amount of money if I knew that I could not take that experience with me, which means that some part of me, and actually a large part, because I know like whatever 100% is, I would probably pay maybe 5% or so. Like I don't, I don't know, somewhere around that area. Right? So a big part of me is saying, I'm not paying for the actual experience. I'm paying for the memories of the experience. Right? The memories are more important if that's what uh, would change your mind about how much you would pay for it. So that is a positive way of looking at this situation. Now let's flip it over and let's look at the negative side. When you're saying I'm afraid of going on stage, or you're not saying afraid of the stage, but you're saying I'm not confident enough in my material. I don't want to bring it on stage quite yet. Your focus is on the first show, right? But you're completely not thinking about any of the other shows that are behind that show, right? So you are personalizing one experience. And what I want to say in this video is that, you know, that, that is exactly like the dice roll, Right? If you roll one die, that's a pretty, you know, it, it could be a stressful situation, even though maybe, you know, you don't see yourself as being uh, egoically e uh, involved in it, right? But your jokes, your comedy is not one dice roll. You're not doing one dice roll to see if it's yes or no. You are the infinite dice roll, right? You get to keep rolling as many times as you want. And if you realize that, if you realize that comedy can, can evolve and that you get to, that it's actually a fun experience going, hmm, that I think I'm going to tweak this. I'm going to play around with it. And, you know, it's, it's just fun to just toy around with all these ideas in your head. And then you get on stage and you can instantly try them out. That is super fun, right? So you need to see yourself as being infinite dice rolls, not this first dice roll, right? You're afraid of, oh, it's a one. Right? And you have as many dice rolls as you want, but you roll the one and you're like, see, for the next three weeks, I'm going to walk around and I'm going to be angry about this dice roll. Right? Meanwhile, the die is still here. You can pick it up and roll again. There's no reason why you can't go on stage. You roll a one. Let's say the worst case scenario happens. You roll a one. There is zero reason why you can't just pick it up and start rolling again. Right? And that doesn't mean you can just start performing again. You'd have to go find another open mic. 
but you can go, oh, I did that joke and you know, that maybe that one doesn't work very well. I'm gonna pl start playing around with it now, right? You can already be excited about your next show while you're still, like before you've even left your current show. That's totally possible, right? So see yourself as being those infinite dice rolls instead of that first one, because that is a stressful position to be in. Your creative confidence should not come from the, your perceived probability of success, right? Because that's saying that, that, your, that your creative idea is, is fixed, which it isn't, right? So your creative confidence doesn't need to come from any kind of probabilities or anything in the outside world. Your creative confidence should be coming from a, having a sense of certainty that you can and will eventually find the right answer. Right? If, you, if we were to take this, this ship analogy, and let's say we have 10 shows lined up for you, 10, 10 different nights, right? after each performance, you are allowed to write down all the, the things you've learned, and then we're just going to wipe your memory, and we'll wipe the audience's memory too. Right? So you get to come back fresh. So this is the exact same situation, except for now you are going to allow yourself, you, you would not feel like you need to be confident anymore, right? There would be nothing, a part of you, if you fail, then it wouldn't matter because you know, like you would be able to learn the lesson and then you'd be able to rewrite and you'd be able to try again. There would be no fear and you would really, like on an emotional level, you would understand like, hey, let's roll the die again, right? So what if we just did 10 shows and we can wipe your memory for the first nine shows. That would instantly change you from saying, is this joke good enough? Right? So day one, like right now, you're saying, is this joke good enough? But in the hypothetical, instantly it becomes, you, you start asking yourself, when can I get this joke on the stage? Right? And that's a much better question to be asking yourself. Right, because you do get 10 shows, right? And you don't have to drag some bad memory with you if one of those shows is bad because you are not the product that you create. You are not the material that you have, right? There's no piece of you that needs or re is required to feel bad about a joke, right? You get to be playful, you get to take the lesson you learn, and then you get to turn around and write something new. Right? That is your, your right as a comedian. Instead of seeing, seeing like something as the end, right? nothing is fixed right? because you get to rewrite and you get to try it again later. So stop seeing anything as being fixed and start seeing it as one point in time on the way to something else. Right? Because that is, if I get infinite dice rolls, then I don't care about any single one of those dice rolls. Right? Even if one of them, maybe one of them does feel legitimately important. Maybe I get invited to this great club and it feels so important that I get it right. That, even that is still a dice roll. Right? Because I can realize that I'm still, regardless of the outcome of the roll, I am still more than one individual experience. Right? I can't lose, I can't lose that. I can only begin something else. Right? And that's kind of a positive way of looking at it. You're saying, uh, if you roll a one, then you get to say, cool, what can I do now? What's possible now that was not possible without the one? And you'll find that in your career, the days that you, that you roll the one, you know, the days that don't go as well as, as you planned, those are the days you grow the most. So no amount of being correct on stage can teach you the lessons that you really do need to learn, right? You will have material that you will swear to God is like the best that you can do. And the, the first show where, it's, where it doesn't get the laugh that you hoped, you're going to realize that there's this weakness and you're going to fix that and it's going to be even better. But no amount of being right is ever going to teach you that lesson. You have to be wrong to get that, right? But even there, your creative confidence does not come from the good dice roll or the bad dice roll. It comes from knowing that you can and will fix 
or not unfixed, can and will find the solution to your problem. I think I'll end it on that. I'm Jared Voley. Thanks uh, for creativesanta.com. <laughs> Keep your questions coming. Uh, I think I'm gonna do this maybe like a once a week thing. I've got a flood of emails and some of them are super deep and I really, really uh, have enjoyed thinking about them. They, they push me to a new level, so I, I absolutely love, even the, the ones that I have not made a video for, I love having the questions because I've put them all up on my wall now and I just have a list of questions that I would like to get to at some point. But So keep your questions coming, I'm loving them a lot. Uh, so this is Jared Volley for creativesanta.com. Thank you for listening. So for those of you that watched my, my, my video blog, I think it's like my personal, personal blog number two, I mentioned that I was going to be, I think, I think it was number two, but I mentioned that I was moving into different areas of comedy and that I wanted to see, like I, I wrote Playfully Inappropriate and then I developed a lot of mechanics behind comedy. Uh, and my personal mission is to see uh, how far I can take those mechanics. And so, uh, I feel super confident in stand-up comedy. Like I've, I've studied stand-up comedy, I've done it for so long that um, I feel like if I if there was an exception to my rule, I would have found it by now. Uh, but I feel like I can't really grow right now if just if I'm writing stand-up comedy. So the current project that I have is to create a a game that is based on the mechanics of comedy. So yesterday when I started to make this video about creative confidence, I realized that, um, you know, it's the weekend and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be creating, uh, I'm gonna have a block of time to work on this game. And this is actually, literally, it's day one of the actual creation process. So I had maybe, before yesterday, I had maybe about, maybe three or four hours of just kind of Googling and research and, and just looking at trying to figure out what, what kind of games I would want to make if I do. Like I, I'm that early in the process where yesterday I didn't know whether it would be iPad or whether it would be uh, like a board game or a card game or what. I had no idea at that point. So I was literally starting, it was day one of the, the actual creation process. Like So there was one day where I, I googled some stuff, but that I'm not saying that counts because that was, that was I was receiving information, but I still had zero, I put zero effort into the actual creation until yesterday. And yesterday was absolutely incredible because like I was doing this video and I was saying what you need is to not require that, you know, you, you're, you can keep rolling the dice, right? So in my head, I was like, if I can roll the dice as many times as I want, what, should, what does that mean now? Right now, right in this moment, I'm creating a game and I have zero idea of what it's going to be like. Since I can keep rolling the dice, what should I do? Right. So I started just creating this random, this random stuff. And then my first, like I have my, my notebook right here. And this is literally like where I started. It's just an empty, empty notebook. And I have a couple pages over here now. but. Anyway, so I started with this, this empty notebook and the first maybe, actually I guess the first full page of notes is stuff that now I'm, I don't care about. Uh, I thought it was cool when I was doing it and I was like, okay, what if we do, um, like I realized that fast thinking games that require you to think really quickly and generate an answer uh, before you have time to think about it can be really funny. So I wrote down like, oh, it's funny if you generate fast responses, like if I say, you have three seconds or you have five seconds to generate five answers for uh, like continents in the world or something. And you have to really quickly say them, then uh, you know you can accidentally say the wrong thing and that's funny, right? So I have like just, just random stuff like this. And the best way I can describe it is that they are ideas with no home, right? So they're just like, they're, they're, they don't really do anything by themselves. They're like, I wrote down, um, different kind of way, different relationships that I might use to create comedy, different archetypes. Uh, I wrote down, give an excuse to be perverted. <laughs> um, so it's just like this stuff, like, and I did not know what that meant at the time, but I was saying, you know what, I, I, these don't have to be perfect. There's no reason why I can't just keep writing until I find something, you know, keep rolling the dice. And then for a page, I mean, I only have three pages of notes right now, um, but I would say maybe half of these notes 
just don't mean they're like they're past. They're already in the past to me. Like I don't even care about them anymore, right? Um, but then I did have a good idea, and even that idea. So that I had that first idea, and I have to keep this abstract because it's still like a, well, I'm, I'm in the, the whole process of creating it, so I can't really leak it out as I go. But anyway, so the first idea I had was was um, I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like that would be a good way of creating humor and it would work quickly and it wouldn't require a whole lot of like computer programming to do. Like I think I, it would be, it's beyond my skill now, but it is possible that I can, I can do that. So that was my first idea. And then I just developed the first thing out a little bit and I started having some basic mechanics to, to this game. And this game is super, super small at this point. Um, at, at, while I'm writing it, or here. So I kind of have just, just very general mechanics, but I know that using like the mechanics of comedy, I know that there's a lot of variety of ideas that I can draw on to create a ton of humor in a very small, uh, like a very contained area. So the game at this point is like only like, it would be like only one screen of like maybe an iPad or something like that. But then I had another idea, and I said, "Well, what if you could actually, uh, like, maybe like so, like there's some like puzzles and stuff inside the game." And I said, "Well, what if you could like solve a puzzle by doing this this thing over here?" And then that got me thinking to, "Well, actually, okay, so um, what if I bring in instead of having like one level as I was going to do, what if I had four different levels and I I had something some way to combine those together?" So that got me thinking in a new direction. And eventually I said, well, why, why are all four of these the exact same? They're like photocopies of each other. Why do they have to be, you know, why is idea one, idea one, two, three, and four, why are they all the same, right? Why not make one and two way different and three and four? And then that idea led me to um, actually think of a setting for my game, right? So now I'm pretty sure that uh, I know the location that my game takes place in, I have, I would say, um, a fair chunk of the general idea down of, of how it's going to work and how and, and why I can expect humor to result in the situations that I'm creating inside the game. So, like, now I'm, I'm, I'm actually excited about it. Yesterday, when I was making the video, there was, like, there was some kind of abstract excitement. Like I, I felt like it, would, it was going to be fun to test myself and see if I could uh, start from a literally from a from just blank pages like this, starting from here and actually creating something that is worth uh, you know people talking about. Is worth uh, people buying uh, the game later on. So that was just a cool idea that I had. That that yesterday. It was, it, it was so abstract that my mind couldn't get around it. But now, I, I really like where this idea is going. And I feel like there's a, there's a direction that is specific that I can get behind. And now I'm excited about it. Like, I've I'm, I'm actually gone from going, this is a thing that might happen. It could still not happen. And then now I'm thinking, this will definitely be a thing at some point. I just don't know exactly, I don't know all the details, but I don't need to know those details, right? I'm going to solve the whole thing using, like, using theory, basically. It's the same thing I did in comedy. I would think about what would, what should work, right? And then I would try to figure out the details from there, right? So, and I actually, I used, I used a combination of both. I, I can't say I only use it, but my favorite way is, is working theory down, Right? And I would say, well, this situation has these kind of characteristics, so it would be funny if I could do something like this. And then in comedy, instead or writing stand-up, I would say, okay, now that I'm kind of sure that this is a good location to be looking, now what should I, uh, what kind of details should I put in? So that's kind of where I'm at right now with, uh, with the game. And also, again, uh, I think I mentioned this in the beginning, but... The reason I want to tell you this is because I want you to know that this, uh, that I, I am going through all of this stuff uh, while I'm also teaching it, right? So I don't want it to, I don't want it to come off as saying, you should be confident and do these things, and I'm not actually going to do them myself, but you should do them. You know, I, I, I think that one of my rules for these Q&As 
uh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to have a rule, but I think it would be awesome if during these Q and A's, if I got asked a question about confidence, I needed to go and 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 put myself in a situation where I'm not confident, so that I can actually speak authoritatively to uh, in the Q and A. So that's kind of an exciting idea as well. Is like I got questions that I want to get answered, and instead of just saying, "Here's what I think you should do." I'm saying like, okay, you're you're um, you're you're scared of taking the first step. Well, let what first step do I need to take, and then or or what first step am I scared of taking, and then I'm gonna go do it, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna say, here's what I learned from my own experience, and also since I already know, uh, I I've already been through your thing, I can I can both say, uh, as a stand-up comedian, I can say what to do, and also, as a person who just literally lived through that thing, I can, I can speak more authoritatively uh, to the idea. So I think that is a really exciting idea, and I think that's a, a direction that I'll take, but uh, I'm not gonna make it a rule, because as you guys should know by this point, I'm, I'm not a big fan of rules. I think uh, free-flowing and allowing ideas to play around is, is way more fun. Anyway, thank you so much. I know this is a long video. My name is Jared Volley for creativestandup.com.